بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Hello everybody In this video I will share with you some hints and tips on using MemoQ which is a translation tool There is usually a misconception about translation tools Many people think by mistake that you enter the, the program and it does everything for you This is not quite quite easy as it seems uh, what I'm going to do now is to give you some basic skills about how to use MemoQ, just very, very basic skills. Remember that when we use this tool, usually it takes up uh, to about several months in order to master the program and to solve any problem that you face. But anyway, this is just the beginning. This, uh, this is the first one in a series, maybe, that we can start on MemoQ. And uh, I'm just giving you this... Uh, this video and those tips, just uh, because I'm a user, I'm not affiliated with MemoQ or Killigray or any other institution, just a user of MemoQ. Now let's start from the very beginning, I would like to share with you something here. The very beginning, after you install the program, and this is the program, I just run it now. After you install the program, the first and most important thing to do is to create a folder specifically for MemoQ. Let's see what we mean by that. On uh, this uh, hard disk, I have a partition called uh, G. Um, let, let's assume that we don't have this one. If we don't have it, anyway, you just uh, you just make a folder called MemoQ. I put it here on G. I put here on G. By default, the memo queue goes to C, but this is a very good tip for all of you. It is first of all to create a folder like this one, for example. I'm just creating it. And uh, I gave it a name memo queue one if you like. Obviously, there is memo queue here on this folder, so I don't need to to write it that, to, to make another folder. So the first thing to do, the first, the very first thing to do is go to a folder, a specific folder, any folder you like, any partition on the disk that you have, and the first thing is to put and create this one, MemoQ. This is what I did on my computer, and then I will move now to the second step. The second step is that in our work with the program, we need two things. The first one, we call it memory. I will explain what it means later on. And the second one called is called term base. I will also explain it later on. Basically, for the time being, please try to make the path also go to, to the same folder that we created. In order to do so, you go to the settings here, in this place, click, and then you go to locations. So this is the first step that you need to do. Now here, basically when you find this one, we have the default value. The default value goes to C. What I did, I changed it here on this MemoQ program to go to G MemoQ. And the same thing happens with resources, translation memories, time base, live uh, docs, corpora, all of these things go to the same folder that I have, which is MemoQ, 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 and this is G. You can do the same thing in your computer, but please avoid muses and light resources. They do not work when you change them because they are program data. They are not program files. So if you choose them to change them, what happens usually is that we have a problem. There are many errors that happen because of this. I don't know why. But anyway, just change the turn base and the memory. What happens here is that after we do all of this, you say apply and OK. And uh, what happens here is that the program will register everything that you have and you need in one folder in G, as I said here. Now, let's imagine that your computer went defective or something bad happened to it. The only thing that you need to do now, to do now is to move the whole folder from this computer to another computer. Uh, originally, if you keep the values at default, each one will go to a specific folder differently from the other one, and it will take you maybe ages to locate them, so in order not to have this problem, 
I give this step the first thing, create a folder just for MemoQ. And the second step, go to MemoQ and say to MemoQ, we want to change the default path to the to the folder. And the, as I said, you go to the settings here and you change everything. Now, uh, this is empty, as you can see. The program is empty when you buy it. It's empty because it's simply empty. There's nothing here. Everything must be filled by you as a translator. Now, step number three. We, we finished, first of all, the creation of a folder and the changing of the path to the programs. And now we want to move to the third thing to talk about, which is the file itself. I have a file. I have this file. Let's open this file and see what we have in this file. Usually when when you try to buy a MemoQ or any kind of CAD tool, the first thing that the vendor will ask you, do you have any work with repeated elements, something that is repeated all the time, something like legal translation that has several cliches and other fixed expressions, or maybe a training manual that you have and every time and then the manual would say to you, for example, enter student name and then repeat steps, enter teacher's name as you have here in this sample. Uh, anyways, I will put this file. This file is an ideal one for MemoQ to, to work with. It's going to be very easy. But what do we have here? Let's assume that we have a file and it's full of repetitions. It's full of narratives, of course, but also the titles, the subtitles are very similar. And here we have enter student name which is very similar to enter teacher's name. And we have here, repeat steps from 1 to 2 is very similar to repeat steps to 10, from 10 to 15. And to make it just more interesting, what I did was to copy and paste the same utterance several times. You have here 15 pages, as you can see, and all of them are repeated. I just copied and pasted all of them. To make things difficult, I changed some of them, let me change them again. Now here I'm changing the orders. So you can see it's more difficult now. What about changing the font and making it bold? Making this one italics, for example. And let us make this one red. So this is what we have. Uh, what does the MemoQ do with all of these changes that we have made. And remember, they are 15 pages. If I translate them in traditional way, what happens is that I have every time and then to go back to the, to the first sentence that I translated and to see how I did translate that sentence so that I can make a copy-paste. And in many cases, it's a time-consuming. It's really time-consuming and it's really... It's causing me mistakes. What about if I make a copy paste of this one and I forget the change the numbers, for example? I think this is something that all translators face and this is really a problem. So let's uh, continue with this file and see how we translate it to MemoQ. If I translate it, by the way, it will take me around two days to finish this one, although it's very easy. But remember, 15 pages and I'm talking about lots of repetitions. I'm talking about the problems of spelling mistakes. For example, if I translate this one and suddenly there is a spelling mistake, what will happen? I have to redo the whole document. So lots of problems in the traditional way. Let us now close this file. I will say I will close it and go to MemoQ and see what will what it will do for me. So here the steps are as follows. And this is a rule. Let's not forget this rule. As I said, this is just a video about the basic skills of MemoQ. Let's not forget this rule. This is very important. First of all, we need every single file needs a project. And every project, project needs two things, a term base and a memory. I will explain later on what they mean and how to use the memory, how to use the term base and what they are useful for. But basically, this is the file that you have here. To translate it through MemoQ, you will have also two things, memory and term base. All of them is called the project now. Let's do the project. Uh, we go to, to this 
memo q tab and then we go to new project here new project I want just to, to pay to, to do this one new project here of course we have several options here you have several options we do not want to use these options in this tutorial in this video simply because they are very advanced I will choose only this one which is very simple new project what's the name of my project my project is going to be English Arabic general translation let's say it's general translation it could be for example for a specific client let's say it is for ABC company let's say it could be anything the project name could be anything now the second step here is to choose the direction of the language translation as you can see it's by default English United States and here Arabic John it's my my default this is my program and uh, I'm using this uh, as a default but obviously you can change them change them now not later on if you change them later on it will not even change you have to change them now this, this is very important in other words if you find that you made by mistake a project and uh, there is a problem with the input and output uh, languages so you will be in a problem it will need some advanced skills to know how to fix this problem anyway just make sure that you choose the exact language that you want for my case I choose only English United States and the translation is Arabic you can choose German you can choose Dutch you can choose uh, French anything that you have in mind you have certain localizations that are not very important sometimes if you use for example French Switzerland Swens, uh, French Canada for example uh, some people would say there's no problem between them but anyway when you choose a language stick to this language you cannot change it later on so we're choosing this project now we, we we say next now here the program is asking me to enter the to enter the file I can drag and drop it here or I can import it from here let's see what we have yes now I have the test it's now importing the document. It's now here. We press next. At any time you can press finish by the way. And here it says where is the translation memory? Is there anything here? This is empty because the program is empty. I uh, emptied everything from this program just for this tutorial to be understood. It comes like this. It's blank. There is no memory at all. So either you register local, which means that you bring a memory from your friend or whatsoever and you register it here. It's also an advanced skill that I would not talk about here. And uh, you have to create or use a new memory. And this is our option. I will give it also a name. Test memory. What's the direction? English, US into Arabic, Jordan. The name can be anything, by the way. You can make any thing, any name that you want. It's not a problem. But make sure that the source language and target language are the same as before. If you change them, it's a disaster. It's a problem. Can this problem be fixed? Yes, it can be, fi be fixed, but this is an advanced skill, as I said. So basically, when you choose a language, please do not change it for the whole project. Okay. Now we move to next. The computer is asking me to enter an, a new term base. There is no term base here. That's fine. Create a new test term base. And here you choose the language that they are chosen by, chosen by default because I named the project English United States and Arabic Jordan. You can choose other languages as well, and in this case, the turn base will have several languages. But for our case, we will have just this one, Arabic and English. We press finish. It's now ready to be used for translation. Let's work with it. And here we will explain 
the uses of memory and the uses of uh, the term base. Now, as you see, we have here review. This one is a review. It reviews the file, how it begins, and, and how it is shown in English. Uh, unfortunately, I do not speak other languages that are English and Arabic, so for that, for that reason, we'll have just Arabic. So bear with me, please, but uh, I will explain what I am writing. The first one, enter the student name. I will write it now in Arabic, and it is like this. So what the computer is doing now is that it's extracting every single sentence, putting it in this format of MemoQ, and asking me to translate every sentence. Let's see. Now I put Control and Enter. I press Control and Enter because it means to confirm, to confirm the translation. Uh, what happens now here? You see, in the preview. What about this one? And what about this one? This one? This one? You see. I'm just scrolling down. What the computer did was amazing because whenever it found 100% identical segment, it simply copied the same translation without my interference. Now I go back. I translate this one. And again, control and enter. What happens? It's the same. You see, now whenever it finds an identical element, it just translates it as is. As far as identical uh, is concerned, what is identical, what's not, you have certain settings, you can change them and see how, how the program functions or the behavior of the program when it finds certain similarities 40% 50% etc I'm not talking about that in this tutorial now here we have enter teacher's name look at what pr this program does in the beginning we have enter student name and it's very similar to enter teacher's name except for one word what happens here is that the program is telling you here in this place that you have similarity, it's only one word which is in red now. The computer the program is giving me in red to tell me that there is just a difference between them, just a difference of one word. Now, what I do is just to, to say, And now, control and enter. It's going now to the other thing. I don't know why it's giving me some old memory. I don't have this memory. Let's check what's happening. The computer is... I don't know. I, this is something that I don't really know. Because obviously I have only one memory. And obviously this memory is empty. I'm sure it's empty because I have just created this memory. But surprisingly, what happens is that the computer is giving me alternatives, giving me something. Maybe it's because connected to the internet, I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, how old is he? I'm also translating it now. How old is she? Now the computer gave me the translation, but it's not the same. There is similarity, but not the same, because how old is she and she and he is totally different. What happens here is that the computer is telling me it's 19%, 90%, not 100%. And here, in this review, it shows me that the difference between them is she and he. He and she. So I know exactly where to look for the difference. I'm changing it now in Arabic. Now, what happens here is amazing. This one repeats steps one to two. 
Now here repeat steps 10 to 15. The computer got the first two phrases correctly and it's, it was very smart that it changed the numbers. Now here it's 1 to 2. The computer understood that it's just a number. So it put the numbers as they are here but only changed the first two the first two words only. I move now to see if there is anything else. Is there anything else? Is there anything else? Huh? Everything is translated. Whenever you have a tick which is green, it means that it's automatically translated. We have something not translated here. Because it's bold, now the computer could not could not understand it, but it gives me suggestions based on the previous inputs. And here I'm putting this one. Once again here, it's italics, so it's not sure, the program is not sure whether it is similar or not. It says, however, it's 99% similar to this one. Okay, I double click and choose it. What about the others? How old is he? I'm choosing this one, 99. And I'm sure it's the same. So basically, it, it translated the whole file. Now, let me ask the following question. If you have a file which is a training manual, for example, and you are very worried because there are certain repetitions and you want to be very consistent you want to say i want to to know how a specific utterance appears in through, through throughout the document what you do is to make a filter you see this no sorting let's go and see match rate not match rate uh, frequency can you see this frequency I will put frequency higher first. What will happen? The program automatically sorts out the phrases so that you have the first one and the second one and the third one. All of them are the same. So that when you translate them, you know exactly that they are repeated throughout the document. This will not affect the production. Whatever sorting you do here, it will not affect the production of the final file. We'll see later on how this appears in the final file. Okay. Now let's go back. Now how to how to, to store them in the term base. So far, whenever you have this stick, it means that you have created a memory. The memory now has a segment which is how old is she, and has the translation of this one. So whenever you have a, a next document another document, any document in the world, when you input this document inside this program using this memory that we have just created, whenever that document has how old is she, the computer will give you the suggestion, this one. In Arabic, it tells you that this is what is stored in the memory. Now, what I need also is to have some sort of a dictionary or glossary or whatsoever. Let's say this one and this is the translation. I highlight this one and I highlight this one. Now Control and E it moves to the glossary to the term base. This is something like a dictionary. Now what will happen? What happens was that you see it's now highlighted Let's see that I am not I, I do not have this translation. I just want to translate it. I will just press the first letter, the first letter, see what will happen. What happens is that it is suggesting to me that this is how is it stored in this term base. Enter, you see. And then it's there. Let's move to something else. Let's move this one, student, control and D. And here now I am 
recording it in the turn base, the glossary or dictionary whatsoever. Now what happens is that it's highlighted. Whenever I press the first letter of the word, and simply enter because it has it already stored if you want to press also control see what will happen we can uh, there is usually control but I don't know it's not working here because it gives you all the suggestions anyway now we have translated by the way 15 pages in this way I think this will be the end of this discussion, but let's see now how it will appear in the final production. We can go now to the export. You see this export? And we say we want it to be stored path. This is the production, it's in Arabic. It's exactly the translation. Remember that we said we will make it difficult by increasing the font size. It's there, and uh, there is something that was in red, and I think I saw it. I have just seen it here. It maintained the format without any problem. Italics and bold and red, all of them. Now, This is the Arabic file. I will delete it. I will keep this one just for something else to do. What I'm going to do now is simply I want to delete the file. I want to delete it. This is very important. You can delete it here, there's no problem. But what I care for is the G. You remember I said that we have this folder which is MemoQ and everything is here. You see this one? This is our project that we said, which is ABC Company. It's here, and everything is there. The documents, the everything. What happens if I delete it from here? It's a problem. If you delete it from here, the program will still be looking for this program pro, project and would, would render an error telling you that I cannot see the project. For that reason, whenever you want to delete anything in this program, do delete it from inside the program, not from outside the program. This one, you delete it from here. I will just delete it. Remove. It's going now to go to the recycle bin inside the program, not outside the program. Okay, now I will re-import the file. I will re-import the file and see what will happen. Now let's assume that this is a new file. It's, it has something similar with other files. Let's see. You see it's a new file now, okay? It's empty and you have all these suggestions because it's based on the other memory. Now what I will do is to go to preparation and say I want to pre-translate. What does that mean? It means that I would like the program to go to the memory and find if there is something compatible just to help me with this. Let's see what will happen. Pre-translate, there are several options. Exact match, good match, any match. Anyway, this it has its own filters and settings that I will not discuss in this tutorial. We say OK. What happened? It gave me the translation as it is found in the memory, as you can see. And here it says 101 identical, 101, which means the context is also identical, not only the word. And then I can export the file in the way that I have just shown you. You will have the same production at the end of the day. Now, these are the basic skills I just wanted to to make sure that we understand how to use these basic skills. Uh, there is something that hasn't happened here in this program, in this project, but maybe next time we can discuss it. If there is a tag, if there is here, for example, a tag, it must be repeated here. Tags are very sensitive and the program doesn't work if you do not preserve the tags. I think this needs another lesson. Uh, 
but anyway if you would like to try it if you find anything call the tag it is just a tag a blue thing you have to copy it from here and put it there that's all I will leave it to you maybe for other lessons and uh, now that's all goodbye and hope that you have found it useful for you this is just for the beginning basic skills how to use it for the first time how to use the memory how to use the term base and uh, you have my email with this video so if you would like to ask me any question i'm ready to answer and now uh, goodbye